Good morning. So I um, thought I'd come in and do a milk class with you guys. So what I want you to do is just test your balance right now. And I want you just to come up onto your toes and come up and balance. Now close your eyes and do the same thing and see if you're challenged a bit by closing your eyes and coming up onto your tippy toes. We're going to see if we can make a difference with our balance. We're going to uh, start today with feet. So what I'm going to do is come closer to you so that you can see my feet. And uh, I'll back up a little bit here. And what I want you to do is start underneath one foot or the other, put the ball right in the center, and let's just go side to side. Kind of funny just watching my feet here. I've missed you guys so much. I hope you're doing well out there. And I hope this comes to an end soon and that everybody is well. Now, take this foot slightly behind you and go right underneath the big toe metatarsal and press. Let that metatarsal melt around that ball. And then bring it back and let's go around the second metatarsal. So you want to see that little bone pop up. And then bring it back and third. Bring it back and fourth. Good, and fifth. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it with a hard, small ball that you have in your kits at home. And just pressure, bring it back, and second, metatarsal. If this is too painful, go back to the squishy ball, the big ball. Or you can use a small squishy ball that's in your kit. Then halfway between the big toe and the heel. So just if I were to look straight down, I wouldn't see the ball and put pressure. And then take that ball and roll it close to where the metatarsal comes down into the arch. And again, melt over it, but no torturing your foot. We're going to go to the outside of the foot. So right here, we want to go halfway between the pinky and the heel. I'm trying to stay off the grout lines because the grout lines ruin the balls. And put pressure. Now where your heel comes into your arch, put pressure there, the toes are planted down firmly, and just making a smiley face back and forth. Or a rainbow, you kind of want to go up and over that ball. Now take that and work that even, consistent two-directional pressure all the way back to the back of the heel. And then work it back again. My helper today is Buddha. Buddha, say hi to everybody. Buddha, Buddha, say hello. And then let's bring it back right where we started where the heel goes down into the arch. And let's just tighten up that wiggle. Then pause, squishing all the juice out. Take pressure off to allow the juice to come back in. We're going to go back to the big ball. We're going to start at the big toe metatarsal. And we're going to take that fluid and push it through the foot and right up the back of that leg. And then bring it back. So just taking that fluid, pushing it through. All the way through, all the way through. Let's do two more wherever you want, wherever feels good for you. Why not, right? Should we be nurturing our bodies during this time? Definitely a time of uncertainty, changes. And take it and scribble everywhere on the foot. There's pause and come out of it. Let's go right into the other foot, right in the center. So now you've switched to your second foot and we're going side to side, just like you're kneading a pillow like a cat. Bring it back underneath the big toe metatarsal and put pressure. Let that metatarsal bone pop up. Go to the second metatarsal and allow it to pop up. Take the time to see that. And the third, let it pop up. And the fourth. Good, and the fifth. We're gonna go to the hard, small ball. If it's too intense, use your soft, small ball at home. Or you can go back to the big, squishy ball. Put pressure, let that metatarsal pop up. And bring it back. And the second. Put pressure, bring it back, and third. Bring it back, and fourth. And fifth. 
Go halfway between the big toe and the heel. I like to find that little pocket in there so you can kind of jump it in a couple times until you find that pocket and just pause. Roll that ball up closer to the big toe metatarsal but not underneath it but right where it comes down to the arch and put pressure. Take it to the outside of the foot halfway between the pinky and the heel and put pressure. Now bring it back to where the arch comes down in, or the heel comes down to the arch, and side to side, two directional, even pressure, side to side. And let's work that all the way to the back of the heel. And then work it back. Let's tighten it up, give it a little wiggle. And pause. And allow the fluid to come back in. We're going to go big squishy ball. And we're going to roll it from the big toe metatarsal through the heel. Here, baby. Let's see. There. There. And again, pushing that fluid through. And in the third, Buddha and Naomi miss all you guys also. They come into the studio looking for everybody and can't figure out where you all went. And again, all the way through. We're going to pick two more spots in the foot. One more, just taking all that fluid, pushing it through the foot, back through the leg, opening up that lines of communication. I hope you guys drink a lot of water this morning. We're going to take all that water and flush it around the body. Let's just take it everywhere underneath the foot here, scribble. Good. You can pause if you want and then release. And what I want you to do now is just take your feet just like before, come up and balance. You might feel that you're a little bit more connected, that your feet are communicating. And bring it down, close your eyes, and do the exact same thing. And see if you got a change in your balance. Nice. Bringing it down onto the floor. I'm going to put these somewhere out of the dog's reach here. I want you to lay down on the mat, keeping your rollers close. And I want you just to lay down and put your palms facing up in the capital A position. So my arms are in the A position here. And I'm going to go and take an inner journey. So I want you to go with me here on the inner journey. I want you to feel a wave through your body. Starting from the back of the head, you'll feel that the head is a mass. Your neck is a space. Your shoulders are a mass. Your ribs are supposed to be a mass. Mine aren't this morning. Lots of raking. And underneath the lower back should be, <laughs> sorry about Buddha here, should be a space. Glutes are a mass. Back of the legs are mass. And I want you just to feel that through your whole body and how it goes through the body here. Then from there, you can keep your eyes closed, but just feel that river flowing through your body like a wave. I want you to take your head and turn it all the way to the right. Take a measurement of your flexibility and take it all the way over to the left. See if your shoulders are coming with you. I can feel that a little bit on me. And I want you to feel down your arms. Feel your knuckles, are they all on the floor? Or is your thumb curled up towards the ceiling? Now there's three places in your body that sex stress loves to live, and it's your shoulder girdle, your diaphragm, and your pelvic girdle. So I want you to feel that right now on your shoulders. Do your hands feel completely open? And then from there, I want you to feel the backs of your ribs. Are your rib, is your rib cage down to the mat, or is it launched up off the mat like mine? And we'll see if I can correct mine today. Going down to your lower back, I want you to take your pointer finger and point it right into your navel. And behind that navel, you should have a small gap, not like a huge suspended bridge all the way up to your rib cage, which is kind of my natural posture. We're correcting that. That's why I love melt. Feel your glutes that they're even. Maybe your tailbone's lifted up off the floor, or take note if your tailbone's down into the floor. Feel the backs of your legs. Are they up off the floor? Or are they grounded into the floor? Ideally, it should be grounded into the floor. Calves are equally weighted, and if you take a peek at your feet, 
whoop, or your dog, hello, Buddha. What I want to see or what would be perfect is about two o'clock and 10 o'clock. Mine tend to splay all the way out because of the way that my hips are built, but the more I melt, the more they're getting to 10 o'clock, two o'clock. So from there, I want you to close your eyes and feel your body. And you're gonna split it into a left and right half. And see if you're more rated on the right side or left side, or if you're perfectly equal. Open your eyes and see if your eyes socket is straight to the ceiling or slightly behind you. So we're just taking all those notes so we can see at the end of the class if we've made some improvements. So from there, we're gonna grab our, oh, <laughs> we're gonna grab our roller. Over here, Buddha. We're gonna sneak up onto it, nice and straight, and roll down. Buddha's really gonna help me today. So from here, I want your hands down, capital A, and you're just gonna rock side to side, gentle rocking. You can also tap the top of your head and make sure that your head is on the roller. At any point, if you are uncomfortable with the roller, just slide off, take a break, and then come back in when you're ready. Gentle rocking, your nose, your sternum, and your hips are exactly the same. So you rock to one side, catch with the elbow, and rock to the other side. Then bring both your hands up so that you're halfway between your ribs and your hips. We're gonna reach those hands away and then pull them down and really drape the scapula over the roller. And what I love about this move is I can feel, am I symmetrical? Or do I feel like one's up a little higher than the other? Just bringing awareness into the body. Good. Now we're in the Blue Man Group in Las Vegas. We're going to spray paint from our fingertips. So right now you're spraying blue paint everywhere. And what I want you to do is really push through those fingertips, drop the scapula down, keep your rib cage still, and spray paint all the way through so that we're opening up that fascia. And it's really interesting as you do this, you can start feeling that fascia through each part of this movement and switch. And when the left hand comes up, I don't want it to go any lower than the cheekbone. So you don't want it to drop to the floor. And then your right hand is to the right hip bone and no lower. Bring it to the center. Make sure those hands are halfway between the ribs and the hips. You're gonna hold a large wad of peach taffy. And I want you to grab a hold of this taffy. And the taffy is much harder to pull than you would ever think. And you're gonna pull it out. And as you do, you're gonna to start to feel that cellophane feel in your fingertips. And I want you to pull this out, keeping that tensional pull until you're holding a large beach ball one inch off your ribs. From there, one hand goes in, one hand goes out. Did I tell you guys I miss you? Huge kisses and love. I'm praying for everyone. It's definitely a, a different feeling coming into the studio and having it empty. And from there, do the same movement, but make fist. Keep your tensional pull. And just take both palms backwards as if you were Spider-Man and shoot webs across the room. Nice. Hands come back down to the floor. Bring your feet in so your toes are apart, your heels are together, just like you're doing Pilates stance. Then open up your heels so they're parallel. Right here, I'm gonna have you inhale. Now as you exhale, we're gonna use our beach ball breath. We're gonna make the sound shh, shh. Inhale, take the foot down. Exhale, right foot comes up just one inch off the floor, make the sound shh. Stabilize. Inhale down here. Exhale, we're going to use our beach ball breath. And this time let's make the sound S-E. And take the hands off the floor and go, gauge the core. S Inhale, right foot comes up, engage the core. S See, yeah, I'm fighting for that one a little bit here. It's and bring it down. Good. We're going to just lengthen the lower back. Really lengthen it out, tucking the tail, lengthen the back. And then exhale. Let's just let that tailbone be heavy. So extension. Good. Tuck tail. Good. And tilt or extend the front of the body. Let's do one more so I can get you off your backs. Inhale, really lengthen. Tuck and tilt. 
could. Let's straighten the left leg, whoop, and roll left. Now from there, I'm gonna make sure that my heels are on the floor so they slide easy, because if you're on a sticky mat, they're not gonna slide. And I want you to just take that roller behind your hamstrings. Make sure that your pelvis isn't popped up, that you want it down. And we're gonna go knees in and then take it out. Come on, Buddha. And again. Come on, over there. And Karina noticed that when I take my legs in, I actually lift them slightly and take my flesh to the other side of the bone and then I pull it out. And I lift up slightly and then press back in. Now on the back of your legs, you can take up to 10 minutes on each spot on the back of the legs. I would not recommend that anywhere else though on the body. Definitely not on your neck or on your spine. Usually just get in, get out. Take that roller and go another inch and a half down. Toes go out and then pull back in. So my morning routine has been meditation, journaling. I've also been juicing, which has been wonderful to have the time to juice organic vegetables and melt. And then I know that I'm, my body's nurtured and ready to handle everything that comes at me during the day. Let's take that roller and go down a little bit lower. Knees go out. So if you're asking me what I juice, I juice cilantro, celery, cucumber, ginger, half an apple, half a lemon, kale, sometimes spinach, but not too often. I think that's about it. And that's pretty much my morning routine with my juice. Keeping our immune systems up. Let's do one more. Good, and also some beets. I'm gonna switch rollers. I'm gonna go to the small roller, and I'm gonna put it underneath my right calf. So underneath the right calf, bink. And I wanna go right underneath the beefcake part of my calf. I'm gonna cross my other leg over and I'm make sure my back is relaxed and not tensed. And right here, I'm gonna tie a marionette string to my knee and just pull in and out. Buddha's really helping today. Now, as I'm going in and out, I'm gonna relax the foot completely and make small circles with my knee. The more slow I move, ugh, um, the more I'm going to get into that fascia. You can reverse your circle. Now let's hold the roller still and just rock the knee in and out. A little shearing when the roller is still, it's shearing. When the roller is moving, it's gliding. Take that roller down and where the calf comes into the Achilles tendon, still relaxing the foot, cross again. Make sure your back is happy, bend in and out. So if you wanna see all the melt classes, they have melt on demand. Uh, I'm trying to think what mine is. It's I think like $12 a month or $9 a month. It's very reasonable. And they have classes for everything. So if it's lower back pain or shoulder pain or runners, like if you just did a marathon, but I would recommend doing that. I do that every day just to keep my cues sharp. And so I make sure that I'm not making up my own cues and uh, going on my own path here. Pause and just in and out. Pause and let's just take a nice beach ball breath. So I want you to breathe um, front to back, side to side, top to bottom. So just take a beach ball and fill it in all different directions. Let's switch to the other calf, so our heel, our left heel is going to be straight down from our tailbone. I want that roller right in the beefcake part of your calf. And then we're going to bend the knee in and out. You 
you can get your melt rollers on Amazon. Uh, the shipping seems to be a little bit better through Amazon where it's pretty expensive through melt itself. You can also use the OPTP rollers, OPTP rollers, soft. They have a four inch and a six inch. Melt rollers are five, and I'd have to say five is perfect, but sometimes the price isn't. Hold it right there, and let's just rock in and out. I also like melt rollers because you can grab your skin. So if I come in from a run, I got my runner shorts on, and I pull my skin across this, these little raised area pulls that skin better than the OPTP. So it's kind of personal preference. At the studio, we use both. Take that roller and let's go down a little bit lower. Take the other leg, put some pressure there, relax the feet, don't let them be tense. Don't let them try to help because you won't be able to get into the fascia. And I'm gonna be pulling in and out like a marionette string is attached to my knee and I'm also gonna make some circles. circle both ways and then hold the roller still and let's shear let's rock in and out hopefully your dogs are helping you at home too anytime I'm on the floor my dogs feel I'm on the floor for them let's pause there and just take a nice deep focused beach ball breath I'm gonna bring the roller up to just above the knee joint. So you never wanna be on the joint. I'm gonna pop up onto this roller facing you guys. So I'm gonna bring my elbow under, my toes come to the floor, and I'm not on the joint, I'm just above the joint. My feet are there to take some of the pressure off. If this is still too much pressure, you can bend your top leg and get it off, but if you want all the pressure, you can go on. Remember not to dig. Now, as you're rolling in and out, you can also take the hips and make circles. Then pause. Now you can bring your hip all the way down to the floor or you can keep it up and let's roll in and out. So the roller is still, so this is a shear. I hope you guys are doing this daily. You know, my body, it just uh, makes the biggest difference to how I feel and how I sleep. And sometimes if I don't have enough time, I'll do my feet and my calves. And the next time I have a little more time, I might do my pelvis and my back. And then sometimes I'll just randomly throw in my neck and my facial. I'm not as good about doing my hands because I don't have any pain in my hands. Pause there, bring the hips down, and let's switch it over to the other side. Make sure you're right above the knee. The good zone is six inches above the knee joint. You can bring the feet to the floor. You can also take that top foot off if it's too much pressure. Small circles with your hips. You can circle both ways. And then let's just rock the hips in and out, doing our shear. Remember, at any point this is too much, just stop or bring the hip down to the floor. Always keeping your core on so you're not in your lower back. I'm going to bring it all the way around and go into my inner thigh. So I'm going to take that roller, bring it straight out from the hip. Whoop. So that knee's directly out from the hip, bringing the foot down, straighten that leg, and I want you to keep the core on and your hips and your ribs move with you. And the slower you go on this, if you race around, you're not gonna feel it, but I want you to just take your time and just like you're tiptoeing through a grassy field, looking for leftover Easter eggs. Just 
just pause somewhere where it feels good. And what I want you to do is just bend the knee and press out. And from there, you're going to lift the heel up to the ceiling and come down. Up to the ceiling and come down. Buddha definitely wants in on this action today. Let's just pause there for a moment. And we're going to take it into the other inner thigh. I'm going to stay facing you guys. So I'm just going to flip it around. Bring the knee straight out from the hip. <laughs> from there, I want you to slide the roller up, push it away like an A or a capital Y. And from there, let's just roll onto it and back. Now, as you do this, you don't want to just do the hips without the ribs. Let your shoulder and your ribs move with you so you're not in your lower back. Take your time with it. The more you do it, the more you'll get what you're feeling in that fascia. And then bend the knee and straighten. Bend the knee at a 90 degree angle, lift the heel up to the ceiling and down. Up and down. So I'm hoping here in about two weeks we'll be reopened. We'll see how everybody's doing, get everybody back in here, love on each other. I look forward to those days. And just pause and let's take a beach ball breath, just allowing the tissue to adapt to the work that we just did. From there, we're going to rinse those pools of fluid we just created. And so, rinsing them, I like to move to the tile, makes it much easier. Got dog hair all over me now. And we're going to start at the right calf and we're going to go down. Actually go up the inside of the calf, turn the knee out and pull back. And the reason I'm on the floor is just so I can slide across the floor with my tush, where if I'm on the sticky mat, it's a lot harder to do. Never go to the knee joint, just go close to the knee joint. And I like to pull my flesh around here. And on these melt rollers, you do, definitely do get some more traction. And bring the roller higher than the knee. Turn the knee in. Let's come up the inside of the thigh. You can either turn your knee up or out to the side and pull it back. And in. If you notice, I have two mats on the floor. One for me and one for Buddha. Of course, we know which one he wants, mine. And switch to the other leg. Let's start near the ankle joint. Knee goes in, so we're coming up the inside of the leg. Knee goes up or out and pull it back. Remember, if this is too much on your shoulders, you can just rub your hand up behind you, like up the inside and down the back up the inside and down the back. Same thing, just stirring that fluid in the bathtub. Let's come above the knee joint. Knee goes in and pull back. Let's do one more. Nice. Okay, from there we're going to lay down on our back. Come on.
Come here, Buddha. Buddha, right here. There we go. So we're going to lift the hips up. And if you feel the bone on your hips right here, right where it dips down, that's where I want that roller. So you can kind of get a feel for it. Your rib cage is nice and still. Legs come up. And I want you to stick them slightly to the right and make small circles. So the circles are really small. You don't want that rib cage to move. You're differentiating the rib cage from your knees. And keep them over to the side in a small march. Bring them together and just the bottom knee is make, make a bigger circle. And you can make this as big or as small as you want. I notice if we've done our inner thighs that this feels much better. If I haven't done my inner thighs when we were doing our legs, then I don't care for this one as much, which shows me that I am definitely moving faster around. Bring the knees together. Pause. Take a beach ball breath in all directions. Take it over to the left side. From there, let's make some small circles. And what I like to do or think about is that my right knee is lined up with my left nostril. You don't want to be way over here. So that way you're right on that P-S-I-S. Good. From here, just making a small march. Bring the knees together, and then the, the lower knee, the left knee, is going to make bigger circles. Bring the knees together. Pause. Take a beach ball breath. And bring it into the center. Let's bring the left knee into our chest. The right foot goes to the floor. Pulling that left knee in. Make sure your hips don't get wonky on you. Technical term, wonky. Pulling that left knee in, I want you to shoot out lasers through the right knee. Tuck the tail. And we're opening up the hip flexors here. Switch to the other side. Ooh, I feel that one. Tuck the tail. Got a lot of hiking in this weekend. Forest bathing. Dogs love it. I love it. Tell you some good places to go right now in Pagosa Springs is Spieler Canyon off of Highway 84. And just down a little bit lower than Spieler Canyon, there's called Kenny Flats. It's nice and dry and it's beautiful. No one's out there. It's easy to do some social distancing. So we just saw a couple Easter elks running around. Now, right here, I'm going to go ahead and go drawbridge. I'm going to bring my left knee in. I'm going to point to the ceiling. I'm going to keep my tail tucked like I'm doing a cannonball splash. And I'm going to point that toe and bring it down. Now, as I bring it down, I'm going to try not to let it splay out, which mine loves to do. But I'm going to tuck that knee in and really tuck my tail. And then bring it down until it finds its fascia suit and that you're just hanging out in that fascia suit. From there, I'm going to keep the right knee in. I'm going to lift the left hand up to cheekbone height. And then once I'm there, I'm going to really reach those fingertips, keep my rib cage still. My hips are not wonky. I'm resting in my fascia suit. I'm going to lift my head and place my right ear down. Tucking tail. Bring both knees in, really tuck the tail in. Let's point that right foot to the ceiling, dropping it down, keeping the tail tucked until you find your fascia suit. So you're really opening up that hip flexor, the fascia of the hip flexor. Reach the right arm up. Spray, spray paint, just like you're in Bloom Man Group, Las Vegas. Spray paint everywhere, very active. Lift the head and place the left ear down. Mm -hmm. 
Bend the knees in. Get a nice stretch here. And from there, we're gonna bring the feet down to the mat. Keep the rib cage nice and still. I'm gonna straighten my right leg where my quads are parallel to each other. And I'm gonna push and shoot lasers through the heel. I'm gonna let my tailbone be heavy, so I'm no longer in a tuck. I'm in just a slight tilt. And I'm gonna slowly sneak up on that fascia. Whoop, there's mine. I'm just stretching, letting that tailbone be heavy and pushing that heel through the ceiling or through the wall. Don't come all the way up into it, so you don't want to get after those hamstrings. You just want to feel that fascia. Turn the leg out and bring both legs across that midline. So I'm actually tilting the left knee in and the right leg, so I'm crossing that midline. and release. Switching legs, bring that foot down. Make sure all four points of the foot are flat. Flex the foot, push through your heel, your rib cage is still. Sneak up into that fascia slowly. Once you feel that fascia, just hang there. Let your tailbone be heavy. Let your heel be activated as if you're shooting lasers right through the ceiling or through the wall, depending on where you're at. And just hold there. Turn the whole leg out to the side. Let the right knee fall across the midline and bring the left knee in and cross the midline. Ah, I needed this. And release out of it. Let's bring your knees right up. From our pubic bone, our hands go on just like stop in the name of love. And what I want you to do is hold the knees perfectly still. Put pressure on the hands, about 30% pressure, and tuck your tail. And then go into a tilt, but don't let your rib cage pop. And tuck. So my knees are still and my pelvis is moving. This is called the tuck and tilt challenge. Now I'm going to have 30% pressure on my hands. I'm going to stay in a tilt, not a tuck, but a tilt. So my tailbone stays heavy. We're looking at the fashion of, of our lower back. And what I want you to do is take it 30 miles per hour, like these are gas pedals, and now take it up to about 90 miles per hour. And you'll feel that fascia in your lower back stretch. And I'm feeling my right side more than the left side right now. And then release. Let's do that again all the way up to 100 miles per hour, keeping the tailbone heavy. Don't let that tailbone move. Take it down to about 30 miles per hour. And again, put pressure, feeling that lower back, not really a stretch, but opening up that fascia, tensional pull. And let's do one more. Nice. From there, we're gonna take the roller out from underneath, and we're gonna come up into seated. Actually, you should probably roll the side and come up like a log roll. Don't come up like I just did, Dracula. <laughs> and we're gonna sit on the roller. And what I wanna do is take your hands behind you and just roll out that sacrum, that triangle in your lower back. Then take your hands forward. I'm going to move my mic a little bit here. And I'm going to move those sit bones. Buddha loves to be melted. I'm going to drop an elbow down to the floor. Swing my hips over and just ever so lightly roll right into the piriformis on the side. Remember they call this the deep hip? From all my hiking, I can definitely feel this. <laughs> Hopefully you have a Buddha at home helping you. 
and take it over to the other elbow. You can swing your hips over. Getting that deep hip. Pause. Let's just take a nice beach ball breath here. I'm going to switch mats away from Buddha. And I'm going to bring this roller right above my scapula tips. So then we want that roller right here. So if you reach around, you can feel your tips of Africa. This might take a couple times. Hands go behind the head, or you can punch the air a couple times to see where those scapula tips are. I'm standing on my own rib cage, so my rib cage is pressed down to the floor. My hands are behind my head. Without my rib cage moving, I'm going to take a measurement here and open up the sternum without the rib cage moving. Bring it halfway up, or you can curl up a little higher, hold that rib cage still, and bring it back down. Don't go for any big yoga moves here. We're gliding through the movement. We don't want to like take it and try to pop anything. I'm going to have you take your left armpit to your left hip. And I want you to breathe into your right rib cage. And what I'm looking for is adhesions in the diaphragm. I just really want you to take another big breath and push through those adhesions. And let's take it over, right armpit to right hip, and breathe into your left side. And then bring it to center. And now we're going to keep the neck long in the back. So neck is long, our head is completely relaxed into our fingertips, and our elbows are going to hold a yoga block. Keep this long, don't get all short in here nice and long. We're going to tuck our pelvis and lift half an inch and let's roll the top third of our thoracic spine. The thoracic spine is anywhere where a rib cage attaches to the vertebrae. It's called the thoracic. Tuck the tail, drop the pelvis and just go side to side like you have a child's safety cap underneath your spine. Side to side. Good. Bring your feet two inches closer to you. Tuck the tail, rib cage is in. Your elbows are pointed towards your quads. Don't let them look towards the ceiling, keep it curled. That way we're presenting our spine to the roller. And let's move the middle third of the thoracic. Let's roll that. Five to seven times. Pause. Drop the hips. Keep the curl. Elbows are looking at your quads, side to side. Bring your feet in a little closer to you and roll the bottom third. Drop the hips and side to side. And pause. So let's take and rinse our spine. I'm going to pull my shirt back on. And we're going to start. Actually, you know what I want to do before I do that? Let's do the inside of the scapula tip. So let's start with that roller just above the scapula tips. When you reach around, you can feel the tips of Africa. And let's do a half back position here. So my elbows are now pointed at a 45 to the left side. And I'm just going to lift my hips slightly and roll the inside of that scapula tip. Remember, don't do it real fast. We're just tiptoeing through fascia. And fascia is a funny character. If you, if you come up to it really quick, try to jump into it, it pushes you out. But if you tiptoe up to it and stick your toe in it, like you're getting into a big hot tub, 
it allows you to come into it. Drop the hips and take your left elbow, the elbow closest to the floor, and open it like an alien and close. Now don't do this around the other aliens because it makes them nervous. My nose is staying at that 45 degree angle. And now I can take that hand, and if I'm okay here, I can make a figure eight with that arm. And I kind of like, like the idea of tipping toe, tiptoeing through that fascia to see if there's any sore spots or stuck stress. Let's just follow this and bring the arm up and go hip on top of hip. I'm gonna come back to back rinsing, I promise. I need Karina here to help me remember to do all this. And what I want you to do is mouse house and let's just work on that armpit. So working on that armpit, down close to the breast. You can also circle as you're doing this, kind of a smurl. Good. And let's take that roller up or down, actually, down right underneath our rib cage. So I'm going to put that roller underneath the rib cage. I'm going to reach my left arm out and my right leg straight. I'm going to slightly tuck my tail. I'm going to bend my left elbow to a 90 degree angle and I'm going to grab my elbow. Then I'm going to push those fingertips and push the toes and tuck my tail and really open up that fascia where I feel this is down in the PSIS all down through here. So tuck the tail, and it's also fun to explore this. You can push the leg back and tuck the tail more, or slightly forward, but just really feel where you feel it the most. On the inhale, um, release slightly, and on the exhale, give it a little extra tensional pull. One more. Good. I'm going to take that roller, I'm going to go underneath my, my deltoids, right here where my caps come together and I bring that point here. It's also called the coughing point if you're doing Chinese medicine. So the elbow comes in, my hand is going to support my ear. So my hand is underneath my ear here. And what I'm going to do is just roll in and out. Mouse housing that waist, making sure my neck is happy and supported. Sorry to have my back to you guys, but hopefully you can follow my words. Let's stay right on that cough point, right where the deltoids come together, and let's just rock in and out. Pause. Let's take it over to the other side. So we're going to start with a half back position. Put my clothes back on here. Right above the scapula tips, but tilt it to the side. My elbows are out to the side here. I'm going to lift slightly and just roll the inside of my scapula or shoulder blade. I'm going to pause and open the bottom elbow and close it. I'm looking for a spot that feels good. And then take the arm and make a figure eight. If this is too painful, just go back into the alien. Let's just reach that arm, roll onto our armpit. Reaching that arm up. I'm going to bring it in, mouse house my waist, create a larger mouse house underneath my waist, and flatten it out. Buddha's given up. Let's roll forward and back. Pause. 
Buddha loves to melt. Let's bring that roller down underneath our rib cage. Reach the right arm out and the left leg. You want it where that rib cage is kind of poking up to the sky. Tuck your tail to support your lower back. Bend the bottom elbow, grab a hold. Give it a little tug here on that left arm, reaching. I'm gonna reach that left foot down. I'm gonna tuck my tail and I like to do a little investigation here and push my leg back where I feel everything opening up. So kind of play with that foot back a little bit and just investigate for you what feels the most beneficial. Inhale, relax out of it a little bit. Exhale, give it a nice little tensional pull. Inhale, relax a little bit. Give it a little tensional pull. Good, and let's do one more. And relax it. From there, we're gonna go into the coughing point or the deltoid. So right here where the deltoids come together and there's a little seam here, that's what I want on the roller. The hand is gonna be underneath your ear. The elbow's pointed down to your belly button. So your, your elbow is on your belly button side of your roller. Let's mouse house and just mash this. And let's rock it in and out. Good, and release. So we gotta rinse our back. Let's see if I can put my hair where I'm not pulling my hair. Whoop. So we've created all these pools of fluid. And so what we're gonna do now, excuse my hair, is we're gonna push that fluid down the spine. And we're gonna let it continue, just like we're doing, taking our hand in a bathtub and swirling that water around in the bathroom. Even when we take our hand out, that water continues to flow. So I'm gonna start on my upper back. My hands go behind my head. I'm making sure that my neck is completely relaxed into my hands. You're not pulling on your neck at all. We're gonna have our elbows looking towards our quads. I'm gonna lift the hips up just slightly so I'm really presenting my spine to the roller. Keep the curl and push that fluid down. Now you're gonna go down Low, but not so low that you feel like you're on your floating ribs. And then reset. And again, lift. Push all that fluid down the spine. Drop the hips. Reset. And again, press. Drop the hips. Reset. And again, drop the hips. Reset, I gotta get one more. Smear the fluid down the spine, drop the hips, and reset. Now from there, we're gonna take that roller out from underneath. The upper back, go right behind the ears. So if you feel your ear canals, I want the roller right behind there. And from there, you're just gonna shake your nose, no. And what I like to think here is that the plate of my face is straight to the ceiling. So if your face was a clock, that clock is straight to the ceiling as you shake your head no. Now from there, take the nose and let's do figure eights on the ceiling or do the back stroke with your ears. And let's stay on that right occipital. So just take that nose slightly to a 45 degree angle and make small circles. Let's pause there and take a beach ball breath every which direction, our 3D breath. And exhale. Let's bring our knees together and take the roller to our temple. And so from here, I like to have my nose slightly to the floor and making circles.
Bring it down to the jaw, right where you feel that crease coming in. I like to have it slightly up behind me. Make the sound, yaw. Play with it until you find the perfect spot. Yaw. And again, yaw. And again, yaw. Bring it back up to the temple. Let's make some smurls, some pressure smurls, circling. Pause, take another 3D breath. Take one knee to the ceiling. Look up at a 45 degree angle. You're right on that occipital bone and make small circles. And when I first started doing this, I like to put pressure on it and really crank on it, but don't. Just, just let it be fascia. Just trust the process. And let's bring both knees to the ceiling. Your face is to the ceiling and I want you to go back into your figure eight or you're doing the back stroke with your ears. And take it over halfway. So I'm going to let my left knee kind of fall to the floor. I'm going to look at a 45 degree angle and then make smirling circles there. You guys can text me and tell me different things that you'd like to see. I know some of you guys are craving shins. Um, but tell me what you'd like to see and I can come in and record it for you. So we can stay consistent with our movement and Pilates with mat and in our melt to open up that fascia. Hold right there and go over onto your temple in small circles. Text me is the best because I see it no matter what. I always see my text as long as I don't forget someone texts me. Um, the comments on the video are fine too. I'm still just not as good reading the comments. I forget that I'm supposed to read comments. Bring it down into the jaw right where it scissors open. And let's make the sound of yaw. 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 One more. Yaw. Bring it back up to your temple. And make smirling circles. Self massage, self love. Take the nose up to a 45. See how I kind of open my knee up? I'm looking at a 45. I'm on that occipital right behind the ear. Play with it till you find it. And swirling circles. Pause. Take a beach ball breath every which direction. Come on to your back. And from here, just open it up, doing that figure eight again. Good, and pause. Now right there, you're underneath the ear canal. I want you to go about an inch and a half up. You gotta hold the roller so it doesn't take off on you. And what I want you to do is really lengthen the neck. Keeping that length, just slightly tilt the nose down. And I like to give this just a tiny bit of a push, just to take that fascia up the back of the scalp, kind of like you're picking up a kitten by the scruff of their neck, and just open up that fascia. Let your nose rise up to the plate of the face, is straight to the ceiling. Let your neck lengthen. And you'll feel this all, the, I feel all the way down to my shoulders. I've been doing a lot of raking. Um, it's kind of my, my way to make some money while I'm closed. I can't say it's easy on the body though. And nose goes up to the ceiling. I'm not feeling 20 anymore. I'm actually feeling some days my actual age, 50 and cracking up as I'm raking. But I love being outside, and I think it's just a great way to love back on the earth. Another fun thing I've been doing is collecting trash on the sides of the road. So I take a bag of trash, and as I go for a walk with the puppies, we pick up trash. 
I think it's a great way just to say thank you to our earth and all that we've been blessed by. And again, nose goes down, length in the back. Good. Now I'm actually going to finish up with something that's not melt because I know all of you guys need it. So I'm going to have you reach your right leg out. Relax your abs. We're going to do hip release. So what I want you to do is take that leg and press it. Let your abs pooch and release. Reach. So this is actually a physical therapy move. And I would say 90% of you, my clients, need this. So we might as well just get it in right now. Now I'll squeeze the knees five times. And left leg reaches. Letting the abs be soft and pooching. So about 10 leg reaches, pushing through that heel. Roller comes back down, squeeze five times. You can actually feel mine adjust. One hand goes in front of the knee, from the right knee, left hand goes behind the knee, and we're gonna push in the direction of our hands. Let your abs go, no core, no pelvic floor. Press for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Squeeze the roller. Switch, right hand goes behind the knee, left hand goes in front. Press and release, press. Let your abs go, let your pelvic floor go. We want to have the adjustment here. Five squeezes with the knees. Take your roller, toss it to the side. Let's go palms facing up, capital A position. And let's do a check and see if we've changed anything in our bodies. So first I want you to feel the wave. Feel the back of your head is a mass, your neck is a space, shoulders are mass, rib cage is mass, and mine's actually been, it's being more mass now. Small the back, space, glutes, mass, back legs, mass. Knees, space, calves, mass. And I want you to just connect to that wave and see now that you can connect even better to it. From there, we're going to take the nose all the way over to the right. See if you got more flexibility. Woohoo, I got more. See if your shoulder's still trying to follow you or if it's staying still. And then take it over to the other side. Nice. If you got more flexibility there, wiggle your fingers. Nice. And then you're going to reach down your arms and see if you feel all of your knuckles. Are all of your knuckles down on the floor? Or maybe your thumbs flattened out a little bit more and see if your shoulders are maybe feel a little more blown open. If you got that one, wiggle your fingers. A little celebration. Whee! Feel the backs of your ribs. Are they closer to the floor or are they set down into the floor? If you got that one, wiggle your fingers. Take your pointer finger, point to your belly button. And that gap underneath your lower back should be starting at the belly button and going towards your glutes and not up towards your shoulders. What you want is a small Japanese footbridge there. And see that's not big. See maybe if it's a little smaller. I got that one. Woohoo! Feel your glutes so they're equally weighted and your tailbone, maybe it's a little more lifted up off that mat. Feel that tailbone. Feel the backs of your legs or they'll drop a little bit lower down into the mat. Take a peek at your feet and see if they're more 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Mine are kind of getting there. And I want you to just close your eyes and divide your body in the left and right half. 
See if you're falling more to one side than the other, or have you evened out? You're nice and even. I'm nice and even now, so I'm wiggling my fingers in joy. Open your eye socket, and earlier if you were looking back behind you, see if your eye socket's a little bit more to the ceiling. Nice, and feel how connected you are into your body. Let's do one more balance test. We're gonna come up by log rolling properly like I wasn't doing earlier. Come up onto your feet. Book. And come up onto your tippy toes and see if you have more balance. Close the eyes and come up. Whoa. And bring it back down. I like to also back the car one way, back the car the other way. And just to get you grounded so you're done, just roll your shoulders back for three, roll them back for two, roll them back for one. Thank you guys. I can't tell you how much I miss you. I can't say because I'll start crying. But huge love to you. I'm praying every morning and surround you guys with protection. And um, just can't wait to see everybody back in the studio. Take care. Bye.